Welcome back to The Burnout Educator. I'm Ryan Savage, The Burnout Educator, and this is Olivia, our co-host. Hi, guys. And this is our guest today, Jonathan Hi. Bell. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bell. How are you today, Jonathan? I'm doing pretty good. How about good. you? Doing really good. It is so awesome to have you here. Yeah. And like the strangest thing in the world that our paths crossed again in this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I saw a news article mm -hmm. that came across just my local news app. Yeah. And it had you with your smile, <laughs> but you were a man. And so it's some context here is that uh, Jonathan was a sixth grader my first year when I was assistant principal at okay. Jarrett. And Jonathan's smile, I've always felt was contagious. And in my memory of Jonathan, it's this, it is back here, just mm -hmm. like his face and the smile. And just, that's how I remember him as a, a sixth grader, really. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm picturing a smaller version, a <laughs> little bit more of a baby face, was, but that same yeah. smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I see that picture of him in the newsletter article. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, that's him. Look at that smile, yes. And what is this about? And so, of course, I had to read it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I had to share it with you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we, I have to talk to him. He needs to be on our podcast. Yes. And I don't remember if it referenced your business name or if it had your contact information in the article, but I went and found you mm -hmm. and then just set up a Zoom meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I and, never remember that one. Yes. <laughs> and I needed some WordPress help. And, yes. And uh, you're, you're more advanced than the WordPress that I've been using. Yeah. <laughs> and so he uh, polite, polite, politely declined. However... <laughs> we had an opportunity to just like touch base and catch mm -hmm. up and, um, and got to hear a little bit more of your story since the moment that I, you know, that, that I hadn't seen you anymore. Yeah. yeah I would yeah. love to, I'm interested in all of this, but I really want to dive into understanding more about this business and talking a little bit about that yes. and then developing the understanding of like where all of that came from in the story and kind of working our way back to, who knows where, yeah. but Jonathan, I'd love to hear about this business adventure. Absolutely. So when I graduated or got promoted from middle school, <laughs> um, I was really eager to work at the age of 15. Um, I had a very different mindset. I'm always told that I'm an 82, 82 year old man trapped inside of a, you know, 16, 17 year old body. <laughs> and I still, I still am to this day, but I just really had a different mindset going into high school. Um, just, I guess, being different from other people mm -hmm. or what, I guess, what people envision 15 year olds to do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So I just started filling out a bunch of job applications, got turned down by every single one of them because mm -hmm. I was 15. Right. Um, and I was under the impression you can work at that age if you have a worker's permit mm -hmm. at, you know, McDonald's or, or even a Burger King or something like that. But it just didn't end up well. So, um, I just kept applying and kept trying and um, just about when COVID started getting crazy, mm -hmm. um, we had to do virtual learning. I sat down and I thought to myself, what can I do at home rather than just doing nothing? Mm -hmm. So that's when I just started kind of writing everything that I've done in the past, which was uh, I sit at home and do social media all day. Right. Um, I do have a couple family owned businesses on my mom's side of the family that I've done social media for. Mm. So I've just learned the algorithms on Instagram, TikTok, um, a little Facebook, and I just applied the marketing aspect to that and learned the business model of a social media marketing agency. Wow. So where did you learn this? <laughs> yeah. YouTube. YouTube, okay. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it started. So. After I've done my research and I was comfortable enough to start consulting with people yeah. about this, um, a digital marketing consultant was um, the top business model that I wanted to get myself into uh -huh. rather than an agency. Um, I personally feel it as if I'm great at talking with people. Um, I can alleviate some of their issues that they have going on when it comes to like their overall business goals what they're truly needing for their business, if it's social media management, social media marketing, um, trying to find what demographic they're looking for on social mm -hmm. media. Um, I felt like that was my true calling. And in April of 2020, that's when I officially launched my website. Um, and it's just been going ever since. Yeah. Wow. So when you say like, you know, YouTube, is this like, so I'm, 
I'm picturing the pandemic is, you know, really hitting and, and we're staying home and you're just like, okay, I'm going to do this and just watching YouTube videos mm-hmm. and just like, you know, other kids are, like you said, just scrolling through their feeds like mindlessly and you're like, oh no, mm-hmm. I'm going to use this. Yeah. And then, I mean, was it just like hours on YouTube learning, watching, and then creating and trying on your own? And Yeah, that's honestly how it went. Um, I watched about maybe three full hours of uh, YouTube videos about just getting yourself started in the marketing space, getting yourself uh, started in the business space as well. Um, And that's when I just kind of got really hands on and it just really went on from there, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And so what is the what is the website like? What's the web URL and what's the name of your business? So the name of my business is Bell's Marketing Consultant. Um, The domain name is www.bellsmarketing.com. Excellent. Nice. And how many clients do you have right now? As of right now, I have seven clients. Yeah, okay. just about seven Amazing. clients. And then do you have your own like Instagram or anything like that, a mm-hmm. handle that people can look up? Yeah, um, bells, bells.marketingco. Okay. That's the Instagram tag. Awesome. That's awesome. And I think some added context that I know that I don't know that we've stated so far mm-hmm is that you are currently a senior at Parkview High School. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're yeah. right. That is necessary. A, a, a seated senior at Parkview High School. Yes, <laughs> yes I yeah. am. Yeah. And you started this, you know, 18 months ago as still a, a high school student. Yeah. What was, what's that been like interacting with, because you're meeting with business owners yeah. and marketing, you know, marketing employees of businesses. What, what's that been like to be interacting with these adults and like, when do they want to communicate versus Mm -hmm. when are you available? And like, what's that like? That's a really good question. So (laughs) kind of going back to where I act like an 80 year old man, (laughs) all of my clients are honestly kind of above the age of 45, (laughs) which is kind of scary because I relate to them more than I relate to teenagers. And it's like, interesting. yeah, it's crazy, but I don't know. There's some days where I feel like I can be a teenager and Mm -hmm. then there's some where, okay, I need to be a man like this day or something like that. So, um, it, it's really, really strange because there are, I want to make myself available for meeting new people throughout the week, Mm -hmm. but I really try and focus on school at the same time. So I'm still learning that balancing. Um, Mm -hmm. I definitely do have a balancing issue that needs to work on, Mm -hmm. um, still, you know, developing as much as I can, um, throughout high school and really just trying to push through it. I would love to learn a little bit more and just talk to you about that, like the days that I can be a high schooler and the mm-hmm. days that I need to be a man yeah. and the mm-hmm. whole understanding. I We talk a lot about on this podcast, like the idea of being an object and the idea of being a subject mm-hmm. and like, why can't Jonathan be both a high schooler and a man? And I wonder like how difficult that is for you, especially Mm -hmm. within the school setting, because I think what you're trying to do is both, Mm -hmm. but the world that we are involved in is what's not allowing it. Yeah, that is so true. Um, I've had some times where people turn me down for my age, um, despite professionalism that I've brought to them. Mm. It was frustrating, but I guess it's kind of just something that I guess it's just the state of mind of business, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a really complex thing that kind of goes on through the day to day. Um, At the end of the day, though, I do try my absolute best to be me, um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is probably not acting like a teenager, but (laughs) (laughs) I try my best to try and hang out with my crowd if that's um, (laughs) if that's something I'm able to do. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed in my communication with you that it seems as though you, you do keep a pretty strict boundary around yeah. uh, texting and math class. <laughs> yeah. I really, okay, so hold up. <laughs> so um, I actually think I was in English class. So, <laughs> so we just finished reading some book. Uh, had to do with Greek mythology. Um, <laughs> and she knows that I own a business. She's extremely supportive of Ms. Portel. Mm-hmm. And she was like, um, so I was looking at my phone. She didn't say anything. So I was like, oh my gosh, that's Mr. Ryan or Mr. Savage. <laughs> um, and I still can't believe that was you that texted me because I was oh, like, that day that I yeah, texted you. Okay. I was like, I know this is not who I think it is. Mm. But then he said, hey, this is your old assistant principal at Jerry. I was like, no way. <laughs> this wow. is crazy. Yeah, this was crazy. So I went into the library and um, I just started texting you and we texted right. back and forth. Yes. And um, 
Oh, I don't remember what happened after that. Did we set up a meeting that day? Yeah, we I did. think so. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'd really try my best not to do that in class. Yeah, but that has to be crazy when you you are like <laughs> this idea. Of, we just you know finished a book on Greek mythology, and then <laughs> this adult who I haven't spoken to since I was yeah, five a kid years. <laughs> um, texted me because they wanted you know mm-hmm. like me mm-hmm. to be a part of their lives. Like I'm just imagining, yeah, this business owner that's 45 and has their own life is texting me, and I'm like, well, hold on because I need to make sure I know this equation in math. It's like, <laughs> but I've set up my own business yeah. that, just so you know, people are contacting me. Like, <laughs> right. So I don't really need this right now. <laughs> like, your math can wait. I have a business meeting. What an amazing, like, crazy experience. Yeah. Um, do you find mostly support at school on that? Or do you have pushback where it's like, no, you're a senior. You need to do this. Do you, do you find those people as well? Honestly, no. Um, ever since that news article came out, mm-hmm. um, really, everyone has been really supportive. Um, the principal has, the librarians at the school have, some of my teachers have, um, even some students. Uh, the most joy that I get out of it is I inspire a lot of people mm-hmm. to start their own business as well. And that's, that's something cool. that brings joy to me. Um, I... I honestly don't like to mention business in school. I'm not one to kind of promote myself Mm -hmm. um, at really any setting. Um, I'm kind of the person just like, yeah, I own a business. Okay, let's talk about something else. Mm -hmm. It's just something that I guess it's, um, I try not to pry too much on it um, because I don't want to feel like, hey, I own a business, love me, you know, type deal. It's kind of weird, but. I think it's. I wonder about what what was the experience of one being selected Mm -hmm. and then two, like having that published. I mean, that, that was a very thorough story that Claudette Riley did. And I I actually reached out to Claudette and was just like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just because Mm it, it did, it sparked this connection. Me reading that brought me into this place of like, I want to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And so I have so much gratitude for her and the way that she did that story. It's so thorough and one, I want to know what's your experience. One, what did it feel like to have that published? Two, that's not your first news leader article. Yeah. <laughs> Three, um, what was it like? And do you feel like it was an accurate representation? Do you feel like, like, wh- yeah, just so yeah. many things I have questions about. So as soon as it was, as soon as it was published, I was in my first hour. This was maybe seven thirty in the morning. Next thing I know, my inbox in my email just started going crazy. And I'm just like, what is going on right now? Like, <laughs> she did not tell me when it was going to be published. <laughs> so my mom's like, go on Newsleader right now. And I'm like, mm. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I checked it out and the post had about 1,000 likes, 1,000 hearts or you know something uh-huh. like that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it was published already. So you know, once that happened... Um, that's really when I feel like I've gotten better connected with Springfield um, and the mm-hmm. other leaders in the area. Um, I've met a lot of people who I've never thought I'd meet before. Um, I've even had one person um, connect me with his people to try and get me business. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, it's been that experience. And um, as the other news article, um, at the time, my family, we did not have a car. We recently just came to Springfield um, and Claudette Riley did that story with me and Jarrett. I yeah. believe it was my seventh grade year. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, all these news articles, uh, people of Springfield are just so supportive. And um, I'm just grateful that Claudette did it for me um, and she selected me. Um, she's doing this thing where she goes around SPS schools and, um, see what high schoolers are doing, what they're doing to make an impact, um, and who could be the future leader of Springfield or the Mm -hmm. Ozarks in general. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I'd love to know more kind of about, you know, where this may be developed in you and if that has to do with, um, a familial impact Mm -hmm. or if that really is just how you know yourself from the beginning of time. Like I, it's just who I've always been or, or where that came from. Yeah. So more of the entrepreneurial spirit, I've always had one kind of growing up. Um, never really felt, I grew up too fast. 
that's honestly mm -hmm. how it kind of went mm -hmm. um, throughout uh, growing up uh, at a pretty young age through elementary to to really now. Um, it's it has its upsides and downsides, mm -hmm. but honestly, at the end of the day, I really like who I've become, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> I still need to understand that I'm eight, 17 years <laughs> old. But you know, it gets the best of me. Um, does that answer your question a little bit? Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm really curious about um, just what was elementary school like for you mm -hmm. and where I, I I don't even know where you moved to Springfield from. Yeah, yeah. so I am pretty much born and raised from Chicago, okay. kind of. I was really back and forth from there to here. Um, my grandfather moved here, I wanna say in the 90s, and um, he was a truck driver. He delivered a load here in Springfield. Mm -hmm. And he's just been living here ever since. He really likes Springfield. Really? Yeah, and my mom went to Parkview actually for a couple years, and she was kind of back and forth too. Okay. But I went to Delaware Elementary um, for my first three years mm -hmm. and then we went back to chicago for mm -hmm. um for about two more years came back my fifth grade year mm -hmm. and i've been here ever since okay and so in chicago was your connection like in the city was your connection surrounding which part of chicago what was that like yeah so i grew up in a really it was a pretty bad area i can't lie to you um i was very different from where I was currently living. And it was kind of weird because I'm known as the whitest black kid you can ever meet. Mm. Mm. That's okay because I really don't take that offensive. I look at it as I'm a unique person that, mm -hmm. you know, wants to do better for himself um, and not really wanting to worry about what goes on in the streets. Mm -hmm. That's just not who I am. Mm. So um, it also had a pretty big part to do with how I was raised as well. Um, my mom felt like Chicago was not a place to raise a kid. Um, especially at a you know a third grade age it just wasn't something that you can no longer expose the child to so that's primarily why we moved back down here was mm -hmm. because it was a better environment for me um, i was able to meet um, new people different people mm -hmm. um, and just overall be a lot more welcome than i was there I wonder if you've experienced, like in Chicago, you have that, you know, the whitest black kid. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you have had experiences like that then moving here. I mean, what you're talking about and where you lived in Chicago sounds much different than Springfield, Missouri. Absolutely. Um, when we're looking at demographics mm -hmm. and children that are surrounding <laughs> you. And yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. so did you experience a shift in that? And was that a noticeable thing within you? Um, and how did... How did you adapt to that? Absolutely. So despite being, you know, labeled that in Chicago, despite the people, shall I say, I really loved where I come from and I'll never forget it. Um, definitely coming down here, it was a big change, mm -hmm. you know, coming from a very urban area to a not so much urban area here in Springfield. Um, the diversity, it's there, but I feel like we can do a little better. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I was actually labeled that here as well mm -hmm. for some people. It's weird. It yeah. is so weird. Um, but I found my group that, you know, is kind of act like me, which I think is a little scary, but um, <laughs> it's really just all about finding um, who you really want to surround yourself with mm -hmm. that can better help you and you can better help them. Yeah. Yeah, we, we talk in context kind of in, here at Beyond, but then also in the context of this podcast about this idea of adopting strategy based on our biology, just mm -hmm. like our genetics and where we come from, but then also the the um, our environment, yeah. our family environment, our school environment, the community around us. We adopt these strategies that help us as individuals get to a place where we feel like we're safe enough for whatever the circumstances are. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you had some really conflicting environments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, I see the strategies like just present mm -hmm. in who you are right now as a result of those environments. What is it like? Yeah. What's that felt sense of having such conflicting environments and experiences? And also this, like hearing uh, you labeled in that way feels like a like an a, um 
just a very explicit kind of converse or call out of mm -hmm. a strategy, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Like naming a strategy and then somebody, like a group of people saying that's not good. And then maybe another group of people saying that that is good. Mm -hmm. And what does that even mean? Whether it's good or not good. Yeah. Right. Like, what is that experience like? Honestly, I'm still confused to this day what it really means. Mm -hmm. It's that's a really good question. And I kind of ask myself that, um, that same question almost every single day when I'm asked that question. Mm -hmm. So I would honestly have to text you and get back to you on that yeah. one. Um, but that's a, I'm really questioning that in my head right now to why, you know, why that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Jonathan, I, in doing this podcast and developing these relationships, what I've realized, and Ryan's really good about helping me just kind of see this just through who he is. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe it's just there, and that's the answer to yeah, some Yeah, maybe things. it just is right now. Yeah, maybe it just is. And, and then I always, like you, like saying, I think about this one, and I don't, I still don't know. Yeah. Um, and I'm always like, so what's the point or what's the cause or what's <laughs> yeah. the you know like searching 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 mm -hmm. and what's really cool to me though is you still having those like i'm trying to figure this out and maybe i'm this way and maybe i'm that way mm -hmm. you've developed still into this man that has his business and is flourishing within who you know you are in the ways mm -hmm. that you do know yeah um and i think that's something that a lot of high schoolers a lot of seniors i mean they're not thinking about even in that ex mm -hmm. those explicit terms yeah and you know whether you've thought about it within the work or not it's clear that even though you know there are those aspects of life where you're like what what's the point of this why is this mm -hmm. happening why are you saying that mm -hmm. who am i you do know what you enjoy and what you're going to work towards absolutely um that's okay. something that i mean just meeting you i feel proud of you not even having you know like the right to say like it doesn't matter like this random okay this woman named olivia is proud of me like yeah. <laughs> but what i feel is just like wow thank you for like mm -hmm. coming into this space because that's something that we don't get to see every day yeah yeah i appreciate that yeah yeah and the way that I understand strategy is really from this place of like seeking safety, like looking for a way that I can find a balance that I can, that I can manage whatever the circumstances are mm -hmm. of today, of this moment. And we go and reach in so many other places to go and say, like, try this one on and try this one on. And this one I got from my mom and I, I don't have a choice. And this one I got from my dad and I don't have a choice, yeah. you know, like that sort of experience. But w I see those as, just beautiful mm -hmm. and just exactly what they are in that moment for that moment. And so my desire is to just see you in that strategy that, that you're exercising right now, like the strategy of pursuing business, the strategy, like those are really, really awesome, like strategies for navigating the situation that you're in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they can be so honoring to you, but to, what does it feel like to have those labels, like the senior business owner? That's what I'm like, that news, I'm really wondering what the, like, I, I've had my name in, in newsletter articles, mm. right? I got, I had my name in a newsletter article for um, when I got the job at Pershing. And then my name was also in it when I resigned from Pershing. Yeah. And I, Claudette didn't talk to me. She wrote the story based on what the communications department put out. Um. And so I know what my experience in having my story like published in that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are parts of that that felt honoring and parts of that that didn't feel honoring. And so I'm wondering, like, does senior business owner feel like it encompasses how much of you do you feel like it that encompasses you as Jonathan Bell? That is a really great question. So when my problem is, um, I like to read comments <laughs> on news mm, articles. Yeah. That is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so I actually kind of got a laugh at some of them mm -hmm. because they didn't read the article one. 
Two, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a lot of people like to read the headlines. Right. Uh-huh. That's a thing, too. So I was reading a lot of comments that were saying, how did he not get a job from applying to 17? And I was like, hmm, you must have not read the article. Right. And then there was other people that were commenting under that comment and other people commenting under that comment. And it's just like going back and yeah, forth yeah. for an entire week. And then I also had this one person say, we all sold drugs in the bathroom. Oof. Yeah, I saw that one and I just laughed at it. It it didn't phase me at all. Mm-hmm. What I've learned is there are some ignorant people out there that will try and label you as what they either are labeling you as stereotypically, if that makes mm-hmm. sense, mm-hmm. or they're just pretty, I'm trying to think of a nicer term, or they're just self-centered i'll Mm -hmm. put it that way Mm -hmm. so when i look at those type of things um i stay professional with it it's like you can call me whatever you want at the end of the day i know who i am um Mm -hmm. and the strategized Mm -hmm. point that you pointed out that's a really good idea that i should start really paying attention to um but that's honestly just how i look at it Mm -hmm. especially from you know getting news articles from springfield news leader and what's also crazy is Two days ago, someone emailed me saying, hey, I saw your story in the Epic Times, E-P-O-C-H, or something along those lines. I've never heard of this Uh news station before. And for some reason, my name, they wrote an article about me kind of copying everything from the Springfield News Leader to theirs, but rewording it a little bit. Interesting. And... I went on there and it's really similar to the Springfield News Leader, uh-huh. just reworded just a little bit. And I'm watching the comments there and they're saying, this is awesome. Um, definitely inspired a 50 year old man to start their own business type deal. Um, I've even had some that says he should start um, speaking at some high schools, some middle schools mm-hmm. um, uh, and a couple organizations around the you know the world or the, just the country. Um, and you know when i see stuff like that i really want to do that i really would love to speak at you know places like a high school Mm -hmm. and just you know tell them everything that i've know or have done through high school and try and better help them become successful um but i'm about to get on my soapbox you know i can't (laughs) keep talking like that but (laughs) but you know it's just i don't know news articles they it's great, but at the same time, it can have its flaws as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, you know, and there is this, the, anything that we create, whether it's like a piece of artwork or mm-hmm. a, an essay or a writing or even this podcast, yeah. right. doesn't have the capacity to be able to actually embody what the three of us and what this felt experience is amongst the three of us, but then also just what our stories are coming up to this moment. Yeah. Right. There is this, this, objectification that is the this medium and all mediums Mm -hmm. and so it's it is it's hard as the person that is the subject Mm -hmm. of that object to have that experience of how do other people interact with that one represent representation of who i am or what my story is or or whatever the case may be Mm -hmm. and what does that mean about me Mm -hmm. How do I feel about it? Yeah. What in the world am I going to do about all that? <laughs> um, you know, and, and that to me is, is something that is so important. It, it's so important to talk about because the, the fact is, is that the offhand comment that comes across in that space may do something to alleviate the feeling of the person that's there making the comment, but it also is likely going to do something about who is the subject of right. whatever yeah. that, that, that presentation or projection is. Yeah. Um, and thinking about, I, I, there's one more, one question that I have around something that you stated earlier, um, around a strategy that you identified as I'm an 80 year old person in a 17 year old's body. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you made the comment, I had to grow up fast. Mm-hmm. And that to me feels incredibly profound. Um, and I'm curious how you made sense of that. Like, what what is that? Um, because that feels like that strategy has influenced so much of the strategies and the way that you 
are who you are today. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about that. <clears throat> well, you know, I used to be a very political person in middle school. So I would, <laughs> so in middle school, I would get up at like six o'clock in the morning, watch the news. <laughs> I'm being serious. I am being so serious right now. I believe it. And you, do you, are you guys familiar with C-SPAN at all? Uh-huh. Okay. So what I would do is they would have these morning, I guess, like morning talks where people are able to call up there and just share their opinion. I used to do that almost every day. And what is so crazy, they actually block my number. Like I'm not allowed to call up there anymore. Because, oh my gosh. No, I'm being serious. Like when you call them through my number, they're going to hang up because I knew who I am. <laughs> and <laughs> so I'm not allowed to go on C-SPAN anymore, which is crazy. But I just, I don't know. I'm really just an old man, to be honest. Uh -huh. um, the traits I have as an old man, I like to go to the lake. I like to look at, you know, the scenery of it. Mm -hmm. um, I do like coffee time to time. Mm -hmm. I talk like an old man. I act like an old man in high school. It's just, it's just this weird thing that is mm -hmm. in me. And I feel like my grandpa has something to do with it, too, because mm -hmm. I hang out with him all the time. And I pick up his traits sometimes, which is scary, but, um, <laughs> good and bad, right? Yeah. yeah that's how that goes. I know. I don't know. It's just, I think it's just something who, I don't know if it's something that I was born with or something that just happened. I'm mm -hmm. not really sure to be honest with you, but I definitely do know it's still here. Um, I really don't know, to be honest. Yeah, well, and it sounds like in the way that you just talked about that, too, that, that potentially your grandfather was really influential mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah. Right. I mean, he established a location down here mm -hmm. that uh, felt like safety to your mom. And so uh, I wonder, is that a solid relationship, your mom and your grandfather? Was, yeah. 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 They're definitely really close. Um, when she was when she was a lot younger, she was definitely a daddy's girl mm -hmm. um, growing up um, and when she went to Parkview um, he bought a house she stayed here from what the stories of what I was told um, and the actually number one reason we came back here was because he was here and we stayed with him for a little while um, and he was able to help us you know get back on our feet moving mm -hmm. to a different city mm -hmm. um, and really getting to learn more about what Springfield was all about. Um, well, we were actually in Republic at the time, but okay. Um, yeah. Was do you think like um, the the old man who you personify? Do you think that that is, or has ever been led by this desire to kind of do for your mom and your family what your grandpa did, and you know, like be that quote unquote man that supports? Mm -hmm. um, is that something that? It could be lying underneath here or maybe even has been explicit within your familial relationships. Absolutely. Um, so I also didn't mention this earlier. My dad acts the same way. Okay. So I don't, okay. <laughs> it is so strange. I don't know what is <laughs> happening, but I really don't know. I'm really going to have to sit down and think about this because <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking about that. And my dad came in my head. Mm -hmm. He acts the same way that I do. And I'm like my mm -hmm. grandfather at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's It really could be that I see what he's done in his life. Mm -hmm. He's been supporting his family. Um, he's kind of been the backbone of everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, his parents actually passed away not too long ago, maybe four or five years ago. And it was really hard on him. Mm -hmm. It was really hard on the family in general, but they lived a pretty great life growing up. Um, I guess just kind of being around him mm -hmm. really gave me different perspectives growing up, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, kind absolutely. of experiencing what it's like to be a 50 year old man driving a truck, you know, going from California to Maine or, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, that's just really something that I loved just seeing him. And when he was gone, I would be pretty sad. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, yeah, I'd have to really take a look at that one. Yeah, we, we like fundamentally believe that like lean really hard into the fact that we are mammals mm -hmm. and that process of like, if you think about mother bear and mother bear teaches baby bear mm -hmm. strategies for how to catch the salmon and yeah. how to, how to build the den and all of those things. Like if you, if you simplify it way down to that level and see that, 
you and then you step back and you start looking at your own experience you can start to see like oh yes that's my mama bear and mm -hmm. here's yeah. how she taught me to make the den and and we pick the our strongest strategies the ones that have proven to be the most successful for us mm -hmm. To be the ones and i say pick like it's not a conscious decision in your mind it's like that's just how it happens that th those are the strategies that get handed down to our kids mm -hmm. and as being a, a father of four i see it like in my face all the time there's like oh there's that strategy that works really well for me <laughs> oh there's that strategy that doesn't work very well for me yeah. and it's not working for them either you know? yeah. and it's just in in my face when you have your own kids but then when you go and look the other direction too and you look back up at your parents mm -hmm. and you see the strategies that worked really well for them mm -hmm. and provided lots of safety and security um of course, those are the things that would get handed down to the offspring. Yeah. Right. You yeah. want the baby bear to survive. Yeah. <laughs> and it, uh, to me, that talking in that way brings such relief to my experience, my experience as a son, my also my experience as a parent yeah. in that maybe it's not so much, is this a good strategy or a bad strategy or right or wrong? Maybe it's more about just like being present in this moment mm -hmm. and honoring whatever is showing up with an understanding that in all likelihood, the way that someone is behaving or choosing to speak or talking or whatever, maybe that's not a conscious choice. Maybe that's influenced by things that are outside and below our conscious awareness. Right. Right. And, um, yeah. I see that so much in like it, you're like, yeah, I didn't even think about or mentioned this earlier, but my dad's like this too. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, we kind of skipped over that because we were looking at grandpa and we're looking at, and then it's like, hold on. <laughs> and, and I imagine you being like two hours out of this podcast and be like, oh gosh, like in another person or, oh, and my mom also does uh -huh. this too. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, my uncle. And it's like, you know, we, we follow this and then we're like, and there it is again. <laughs> <laughs> and, there and, and yeah, I experienced that so much. Bridger and I will be doing something and all the time, like, I'm my mother, you know, <laughs> just, just <laughs> plain and simple. Yeah. And it's so easy to use what we saw in our body felt mm -hmm. as the best choice. Yeah. It's so easy to just fall into and and then from there grow into our own. Absolutely. You know, we have totally different experiences than them. Um, but fundamentally, we are. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't want to switch the topic mm -hmm. too drastically, but I drastically, but I've been wondering this so much. Yeah. Being a senior. I'm sitting here thinking about my own experience in high school mm -hmm. and the experience that we put on so many of our students um, and the idea of, well, you're going to go to college, right? Oh, or, I definitely have some stuff to say about that. Okay, yeah. yes, right. because I'm sitting here and my experience uh -huh. is I love to talk to my students about the idea of college not being a need yes. because I feel that we are told still that it is. Yes. And if you're going to be something, mm -hmm. you need to do this. And I have so many friends and family members that that is not the case. Actually, that ruined them or they chose not to and look at how they're flourishing. And I'm sitting here mm -hmm. looking at you and what you've already created and I'm wondering what is your experience with mm -hmm. school and do you find importance in it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And do you have a thought of the future? Because I'm like, this this man doesn't need college. <laughs> like, <laughs> look what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So why, unless he wants a specific experience that that would allow for, you mm -hmm. know, like maybe you just want this or maybe you, I'm wondering what you have planned and if there yeah. is a plan. Absolutely. So for the school um, going to college, it's definitely something that I've been an advocate about for the past three years. Mm -hmm. And I was researching, this might sound a little crazy, but I was looking at colleges my freshman year. Mm -hmm. I was making a list of what colleges, mm -hmm. what states, what major I want to go into. And before I even thought about starting a business, it was music as music education. That's something that I wanted to do. Uh -huh. 
But after I started the business, I realized why is people why are people telling me to go to a four year university, take out sixty thousand dollars from nowhere, put myself in debt for basically my entire life, and that's the way to success? Like that doesn't make any sense to me. So what I try to encourage people, or at least people my age, is to just to pick up a trade. If you want to go to college, just pick up a trade. You'll mm -hmm. easily find something um, that at least you'll like to do for a couple years, if not, you know, maybe for 10, maybe even 15 the most. But I really feel like us as a society is so heavy on going to college, getting a nine to five, and then people realize like maybe when they're 40, I don't really know. Why am I doing this? Yep. Why am I uh -huh. going, why am I waking up at nine o'clock, clocking in somebody's, you know, clocking into uh, my shift, making somebody else money? That mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm sitting here th like thinking about this every single day because I see it happen all the time. They're not happy with what they're doing. They know you're still having to pay college debt. They know you're going to want to buy a house, mm -hmm. so you're applying on more debt to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to want to buy a nice car. You're mm -hmm. going to want a family. So it's really just people claim that they're wanting to set you up for success to go to university, but it's really not. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, I'm so, oh my gosh, I am so heavy on that topic. But um, as for future plans, I've always wanted to be a lawyer. So I am actually going to OTC to be um, to per, to go under their arts or associative of arts business program, okay. and um, I'm still going to be running the marketing business. And I actually have a couple of ventures that I'm wanting to start within maybe the next ten years. Um, but that's just something to have a backbone on if I wanted to go to law school, and the business may have not mm -hmm. succeeded as much as I wanted to. Um, in, in between the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, but I would love to be a corporate lawyer when I get older. That's something that I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I I love that answer. And I love hearing it from you because I honestly had no idea where that would go with my question. Yeah. I could see it going in so many ways. Mm -hmm. and And what I really enjoy is you kind of surprised me mm -hmm. by saying something different than what your current business venture is saying like yeah I, I i'll still do that and you know maybe it'll go somewhere and i have some plans of where it can go yeah but i'm still also wanting to do this that is not my mm -hmm. current thing mm -hmm. and to be completely honest with you it's very impressive because I have those battles within myself. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this last night, Ryan and Jen and Bridger and I, and how like, mm -hmm. how is it okay to mm -hmm. make a change? How is it okay to say, I'm doing this now, but I might not do this later? And it's inspiring to have you mm -hmm. sitting in front of me mm -hmm. and this connection I'm not thinking about your age. I'm not thinking about the color of your skin. I'm not thinking about your gender. I'm thinking about like, whoa, you're okay with saying I'm doing mm -hmm. this now and I'll do something later. Yeah. And while I do something later, I could also do a piece of this with that. Yeah. Your mentality towards it and just overall understanding of mm -hmm. being okay for change. <sighs> That's something I struggle with so just intimately within myself. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you saying those things. And I can tell that you, you do, you say, you know, like I'm, Oh, I'm heavy on this. Like, uh, like, <laughs> and I see it and I see that passion and it's yeah. just like, man, you're allowing yourself to say there are so many opportunities and I'm not going to force myself into one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say, I'm starting to see another pattern with kind of going to universities at my school. There's a lot of teenagers that are going to uh, going to a four-year university to pursue, uh, I don't know, arts or something along those lines. And it's a little frustrating, but I'm not here to change, you know, I'm not here to force you to change your mind. Mm -hmm. But 
I just want to be that person that can say, there's other ways you can do this. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, rather than spending so much money on Mm -hmm. something that probably won't get you to where you want to be in the future. And kind of as for change, this might sound weird, but (laughs) as a 17 year old that is giving, I'm assuming you're like 24? Yeah, 27. 27. Yeah. 27 person advice. Um, This is actually really weird. I've never done this before. (laughs) But what I can say is you're a lot, well, you're not actually that much old. Well, yeah, you're a decent amount of years. But yeah. anyway, um, you're, you, you're, you're a lot more experienced than I am. Um, you have a life, you have responsibilities more than I do. What I can tell you is, um, at least looking at my standpoint from at a really young age is just do it. Mm-hmm. Even though if it's, you know, if it seems really hard, I personally wouldn't doubt taking a chance on it. Um, I know I struggle with it sometimes, but I try my absolute best to make sure that I'm kind of mind mapping it out to where it can make sense, Mm -hmm. to where I have at least have a higher chance or a higher percentage of becoming a little more successful with if this change does happen. So I would say it really just depends on what it is you really want to do and how you can do it. Um, that's how I would look at it and just simply do it. That's what I would tell you. I appreciate that so much. And I love the, yeah, I, I bet that feels weird. Like, (laughs) well, here's my advice, but I haven't experienced in, in that statement of like, you have more experiences. Like, I don't know if I do, Mm. you know, we have different experiences, but this is so cool to me. And, yeah, and you know, I teach eighth grade, so I'm talking to 13, 14 year olds, and there will be times that we're having a conversation and they maybe don't realize it in the same way of you being like, this is kind of weird because I'm giving you advice, but they're telling me <laughs> something and what you don't realize is how much I'm sitting there going, never thought of it like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I hope that you continue to find people and experiences that can say, yeah, I don't care how old you are. I don't because your experiences are different than mine so i'm not looking at the labels that i put on you as a human Mm -hmm. well you're a senior in high school so of course you're going to feel like that Mm -hmm. right now you haven't you haven't been out in the world okay no like that's amazing that you've developed that mindset and i'd love to hear you know where it came from or what you have to say to me because Mm -hmm. even though i might be in a different place it doesn't mean that your words won't touch me in the same way right and there's this experience of, and there's this experience that adults place on children mm. that, uh, like, in extreme, like, but that it dehumanizes the child experience. Mm-hmm. And why can't what the 17 year old says influence what the 27 year old feels? Right. Or what the 34 year old feels? Why not? Your human experience is, is no more human than mine. Right. And just because I've been on the planet longer doesn't mean that yours is less than mine. And you know, it almost comes to a point of reality check. Yeah. As I'm hearing you say those things and as I'm thinking back to me at 17, so we're like 10 years ago, you yeah. know? And then I can look back at me five years ago and it's like, no, what you're saying, I do have a similar experience of... I remember myself saying, well, if I felt this way, I'd do something about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, thank you, Jonathan, for sitting in front of me, but me maybe even seeing a younger Olivia in your spot saying like, hey, remember when you Mm -hmm. said that? Mm -hmm. Why don't you do something about Mm -hmm. it? Don't fall into the ways of the Mm -hmm. society's adulthood must do's. Right. You know? <laughs> yes. And so as Ryan, as you're like, you know, we put these dehumanizing factors onto mm-hmm. children and young adults. It's like when in reality what I see is you being so human that it creates fear. And the easiest way to deal with fear is to say, mm, you just invalidate. Yeah. Yes. Invalidate, invalidate, yes. invalidate. And instead I'm like <clears throat> Yeah, let's talk more about it. Let me hear what you have to say. Like, yes, 
please. Well, it's easy for you to think that because pff, you don't hardly have any experience. Right. <laughs> and it's like, no, let's get a whiteboard out and let's jot down our, jot yes. down our experiences. And you do. You have so many. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I love to hear about them. Yeah, we live different lives. Mm-hmm. Isn't that so cool? Yeah. yeah. And your experience of recognizing. So I see what you described, right? The the four year university and the loan and the house and the kids and the and the car. Like mm-hmm. that's a strategy, right? Like that's a strategy that gets glamorized in American culture. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're sitting in your seat saying, I see that as a strategy. But it's not the only one because I have these other experiences, these other disconfirming experiences that says, what about that guy? Mm -hmm. That guy didn't use this strategy and they're successful. Exactly. What about that gal? What about this? What about this? What about this? And you're looking and saying, I hear that you're telling me that this is the best strategy, but what if I don't believe you? Yeah. Or what if we just ask questions about it? Right? Like what if we just are curious about that? Mm -hmm. And saying, maybe that is the best strategy for someone. And maybe it's the best one for me. Maybe it's the best strategy for me to get to be a corporate lawyer. Yeah. But maybe it's not the best strategy for me to be Jonathan Bell today in this moment. Mm-hmm. And what is it like to hold multiple strategies? What's that like? Honestly, it's. I think of it more as an exercise for me. Mm-hmm. Because for a long period of time, I really struggled with balancing everything together. Mm-hmm. To this day, I am on the computer 24-7, and I'm really trying to not be that way because mm-hmm. I've learned that there is much more to business. You have a life outside of it. So mm-hmm. it's honestly really just, I feel like it's how I set myself up when I was 15, 16 mm-hmm. age, and knowing that this is what I'm going to do, it's just how do I get there? How do I properly map this out mm-hmm. to where it will to where I want it to make me successful, but how can I get there type Mm -hmm. deal. So sure, I wanna be a corporate lawyer. Well, my plan is to go to OTC, pursue a business degree. Mm -hmm. It's about, I wanna say less than Mm 16,000 for the tuition. Okay, I'm still managing the business. Where can I take this business type Mm -hmm. deal? So I, I feel like it's more of just how do I prep things before yeah. it happens? Kind of if building your own sense. strategy. Yeah. 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 So it's really just, kind of, yeah, it's really like building a foundation to mm-hmm. see, okay, this might work. This may not work. Mm-hmm. It's you're really having to re-strategize almost every single day, mm-hmm. or at least when something doesn't go right mm-hmm. type yeah. deal. Um, that's honestly how I look at it now. Mm-hmm. I know in my experience, I accepted this strategy Mm -hmm. is the best, right? And then I was the guy that you were talking about that ended up in the place that said, I'm punching this time clock and it's, it, I'm not getting what I thought was promised as a result of this strategy. Yeah. And, um, there's a whole podcast episode about that. So we don't have to run down that road, but the, that experience is a, is a real experience and one that I experienced. And um, I'm so encouraged by your willingness to look at these strategies and just say, what what feels best now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That leads me to, I've been thinking back to the comment we talked about at the very beginning of people saying and calling you the whitest black kid. Mm -hmm. And I think that in my experience of you so far, my quote unquote answer or response to that when you're like, I don't, I don't really know. I don't really get it is you have responded and continue to respond to that in the same way that you're doing everything else we've talked about, which is you random human, whoever are responding to me with fear because you don't understand what I'm doing. And I'm doing what I Mm. want right now and what I see as the best for me. Mm. So I don't really need to understand what you're labeling mm-hmm. because it's not my label. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I this whole conversation, I've been going back to like, oh, I know that, you know, it was something that you're like, I don't know. I'll have to think back on that. I, I don't really know. And I still, if I really think about it, I struggle with it. And it's like, oh, 
No, because you're just handling it in the same way as you're handling going to mm-hmm. college or university. You're saying, no, well, they're saying I should, but I'm saying I'm going to do this. And then it might change. They're calling me these names or this title, but I'm just doing what mm-hmm. I see is right at the moment. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's really weird because I did not think of anything you just said, but it's when I hear other people or yes. when I hear someone kind of tell that, like mm-hmm. kind of my story towards me, it's really weird to hear it because it's like, you know, you're doing it, but you don't mm-hmm. like, you don't really envision everything that you're doing, right. if that kind of makes sense. It is so strange to hear that in person, like to kind of just know that's how it's really been. Mm-hmm. And me not really thinking about that. Mm-hmm. That is crazy. What does it feel like in this moment to feel seen in that way? It's def. It really woke me up. I can't lie to you. Um, and I'm really proud of the things that I've done and that mm-hmm. I will continue to do. Um, I'm as well still, I'm still like, excited but can't believe it's happening that we met again (laughs) and that we're having this conversation you know in three yeah um it's an awesome moment right now to just sit down have a conversation with you guys and just let it out and learn what i've done because i really haven't really paid attention too much about how i did it if that kind of makes sense it's weird to speak it to someone and then they kind of retranslate it back yeah it's Mm -hmm. it's definitely a weird feeling um, for sure. Yeah. It sounds to me like you've been going and you've been doing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we've seen and we've heard and half the things. Like, I don't even know the rest of the things that you're doing in your life or where you're going to go from mm-hmm. here. But what you maybe haven't gotten the chance of is hearing other people instead of saying, like, you know, just like, oh, great job. Yeah. Just the, Mm-hmm. Hey, this is the way you're living. Let's slow down and yeah. take it in. Yeah. And I hope that any time that you want something like that or any amount of translation and mm-hmm. regurgitation or just speaking in connection, that you feel free to come back. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The, my experience of seeing your picture come up in my news feed in that way was this immediate felt connection back to 12 year old you Mm -hmm. but it wasn't it had nothing what i experienced in that moment had nothing to do with what your name was or how old you were any of those things it had everything to do with how i felt when i was around you when you were 12. Mm -hmm. yeah and I felt such kindness. I felt like regard. I felt, um, I saw pride in you and not from me. Like I saw it in, like emergent from you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I saw, I saw what we're hearing now, but didn't have the words <laughs> yeah. to say that. Right. I saw a strong, competent person who's just trying to do the best that they can but happy to be kind and happy to be like in connection with others. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that he was doing it quote unquote, right? Yes. None of that. Like there's nothing. I just, I I feel the need to explicitly be like, and that doesn't mean (laughs) that you were following every rule to a team. And I don't know what type of kid you were, but I'm just like, you are this. And it doesn't mean that you were marking Mm -hmm. all of the boxes on the paper correctly. Yeah. No, you were just being you. I'm thinking about so many of my kids Mm -hmm. that are labeled as a certain way Mm -hmm. because they can't or don't do something specifically in school, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and maybe you were the kid that like boom boom boom. Maybe you you know were in between. Whatever it is, this is who you are. Yeah. What I feel now is what I felt then. Yeah. And 
how bizarre is that for me as an adult to feel that when you're 12 and I'm your assistant <laughs> yeah. principal supervising the lunchroom, right? Like how bizarre <laughs> is that? And then this opportunity to just get to sit down and, and honor that in you, in this moment, in this conversation, to just be a mirror for you, to like really stand here and just say, this is how I see you. Mm -hmm. And I love it. And we haven't talked in six years. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, what an opportunity. Uh, it's just... Ryan, as I hear you saying that to Jonathan, what I experience is this overwhelming amount of... You guys were able to reconnect through that article. And none of this should diminish all of what you've been able to do with your business and with who you are. But what I hear is Ryan saying, those things are amazing, but you at your core, mm -hmm. you are the human that I've always seen. And that's what I love. Like you have yes. these strategies that have built you and continue to, but without those, you are still the human of Jonathan mm -hmm. Bell. Yeah. And that's a wonderful human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you guys. It was, um, it was a really great experience, you know, coming here and just settling down for a little bit. Um, definitely don't really get to do that often as much no. as I would like to, but <laughs> I'm really glad that we reconnected though. So much. It's been, I never thought we were ever going to do this, but I'm glad it happened. Yes. Um, I just cannot believe, like, you know, your assistant principal <laughs> <laughs> is sitting in this chair yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, um, what, are you retired now? Are you retired? Uh, my letter definitely said resigned. Resigned? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just so crazy to me because we've, you know... He was always disciplining the kids and Jared <laughs> and people say, oh, he's so mean. He's the worst person ever because, you know, <laughs> but I never viewed him as that way, though. I was just like, he's just doing his job. Just stop doing whatever you're doing. <laughs> and it's, just, it's so crazy to me that I'm just sitting in this chair. He invited me here to just let it all out. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully we get to do this again sometime and, um, yeah. you know, we go out to lunch or something, but I, I really appreciate it. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Thanks for accepting the invitation. Absolutely. Oh yeah. And, um, the, the greatest gift that I've received from stepping away from my position and having some time and space to be able to start exploring just all of the things that we've talked about today and so many more is that this like this invitation i can do it anytime yeah right um it's it's just i can invite anybody mm -hmm. and not everybody says yes mm -hmm. we were just talking about yeah. somebody who yeah. said it's a solid maybe right <laughs> yeah. like it's not always accepted but the invitation is there for just a desire just a communication for me i desire to connect with you the human mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to you and to you and to you and and everybody listening like it's just an invitation mm -hmm. and to me this is a, an amazing example of what can happen from an acceptance of the invitation yeah um yeah. but just you know what what beauty lives in this space in this moment i'm so excited to get to capture this mm -hmm. and be able to, this is what we get to share. Yeah. And so I'm, s thank you for helping create that. Yeah. And your vulnerability and your honesty and just your experience and, and just who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I definitely appreciate yes, you guys. Thank you. Well, if, uh, if you'd like to reach out or contact us, reach out at uh, contact at burnouteducator.com. Yeah. And you can support uh, free therapy for kids by visiting www.patreon.com slash burnt out educator. Yes. So until next time, thank you, Jonathan Yes, Bell. thank, thank you, Jonathan. you, guys.